This podcast is part of the No Phony Podcast Network, the home of independent awesomeness. I'm going in. Guys, welcome to uh, the, the latest, newest, right now, live episode. Well, we're not live, but we're recording. Uh, on the road with Jim and Casey, my partner, um, right here, is, as always, telling me I'm not good enough. I'll never be strong enough. My shoulders are weak. My wrists can be grabbed by one of his hands. Casey Sher. That's right, brother. All right. Today... Uh, one of our favorite guests, I, I just love what this guy knows, his mind is beautiful, God, he's the anointing from God, Dr. Eddie and Graves, welcome to the show once again. Thank you, thank you for having me. How you guys doing tonight? You doing pretty good? Woo! Yeah, I mean, well, so, since last time we talked, uh, I mean, you know, I know Casey was saying how he doesn't dream anymore. Uh, Casey, no more dreams recently? Uh, you know what? Actually, earlier today, I thought I was sitting there. I thought I was dreaming a little bit. I, it was called, I guess, a nightmare. Uh, but then I, I realized I was just on the telephone with you. Is that what it's called? <laughs> nightmare? Wow. You know, you guys are funny. <laughs> when we, why don't we ever hang out? You know, Casey never actually wants to hang out with me. There's a pandemic. Oh, come on. <laughs> I thought you guys hung out all the time. <laughs> you believe that? <laughs> Conspiracy theory, huh? Right. You know, I guarantee you, I, I, I promise, things are, I, well, no, I, I don't want to say that. I, should, I, I need to back up my words. Things are going to be different, and they're never going to be the same. Like, uh, Eddie, do you have children? Yes, I have two daughters, uh, 25 and 21, so. Okay, if they ever have kids, their kids are going to grow up and see pictures of us at restaurants or, cl or clubs or, uh, or bars or all these things. Uh, I mean, you know, hopefully not too many pictures of us drunk in bars, like dancing with, pe with people up close. But, like, they're going to see these things, and they're going to be like, Daddy, what's that? And... And what what are we gonna say? We're gonna say, hey, that was when you we used to be alive. That's when the world changed. That's what right. that was. That's the period when everything changed. So oh god. Okay, well. All right, Lord. Hey, please. Okay. I have so many questions for you as usual. Um I've been the the stuff that's been coming to me recently that I thought about. Is you ever notice, we'll get into portals then, because I, I love talking about this stuff, and I, and I was reading some stuff on, in Afghanistan, there might be some portals there that, or in the Middle East somewhere, they're saying that the military found. Um, but I, I always felt, I forget who, was it Mike, I forget if it was Michael Derby or one of us, of, of how, the, it says gold. Every, I know I might, I talk about this a couple times, but Good God gold. Yeah. It's all so close with each other. And why in Genesis, uh, uh, in Genesis, I, I think it's six, five or six. It might be five. Uh, right before six, when they're talking, it's, it's in between somewhere. You guys got to find. But when God told Adam, the, the gold in that land was good. I keep going back to this. I, and I keep thinking about it. Why would God tell us that gold's good? Like, I mean, why? And I wonder if it's for portals to get out of here or to do, I don't know. I mean, not that we need that, but I don't, I don't know. I'm going crazy over here. Well, actually, um, that gold that I, I believe that gold he was talking about is um, amber or the Bible calls it medallium. And yes. amber, is what's, amber is what's used in preserving DNA. Um, in the movie Jurassic Park, remember the first movie? when they were able to make the dinosaurs um a mosquito who bit a dinosaur was stuck in amber and they were able to extract it and use that and um create dna so what he's saying is 
the, 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 the amber or the medallion in this land is good. In other words, there's another land where they're using it and making genetic um, um, figures and genetic manipulation, and they're not, that's not good gold. So that, that's, that's just what I think based on what we know about gold and um, even, even Solomon. Solomon had more gold than anyone. And the Bible, the only other place where the number 666 is mentioned is about is when Solomon, it says he had um, 666, or 666 worth of gold. And I know that Solomon, if you read, Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived at that time, according to the Bible. But the Bible says that he got turned away by outlandish women. That's exactly what it said. And these women were worshiping other gods. So since he was a freak, so to speak, he started building statues for these other women, these other gods, against what God you know, wanted. So with his wisdom, he was able to make creatures. The Bible says in one place that, um, let me find that, I have to find that scripture for you because it's super, it's super powerful. It, it says that the, the, there's wisdom with the preacher um, and he does counting. And when he counts, that they weave and they make inventions. So when I looked up those words, weaving and inventions, it's talking about DNA strands. And in the earlier portion of the Bible, it tells us that Solomon had apes and peacocks. Now you ask yourself, why would he have apes and peacocks? Some the theologians think he, he was collecting a zoo since he was so rich, but it just something just doesn't, doesn't sound right with that. In that verse I'm telling you about, he said that God created man upright. Now, why would he say that God created man upright? Because the stuff he was doing, the stuff that the devil was doing, was those Neanderthal men that weren't upright. That's where the whole evolution thing comes in. But gold seemed to be a key thing in being able to manipulate that DNA. It's like alchemy. Alchemy yes. is, is like gold. So when he's talking about that gold is good, he's saying that this gold is good, but there's another gold that's not good. It's not literal gold like gold bars. He's talking about this bedellium, which is amber, and it preserves DNA. What? What? Wow. Oh. Well, and, and, well, and Solomon also, uh, it's not in the Bible, but the Testament of Solomon, he's talking about uh, how to control all the demons. And exactly. How he, and, and how he used the, that's where you get the pentagram from, because he used like a silver pentagram and he put it in water in, a, in like some kind of like a, a flask or something like that. And he threw the water and, it, you know, it hits the demon and the demon's like, it's like paralyzed. And, it, you know, you can uh, apparently like that was his way of uh, manipulating it. And like who, and every time he did it, he's like, who, who binds you? And the demon mm. was like, Uriel or Gabriel or, or whoever. They're bound by different angels. He definitely had a relationship with demons. Nephilim. Nephilim, I should say, because if you mix in um, the DNA of an ape and the DNA of a human, then you're going to get these Neanderthals and you're going to get these Nephilims, what they call Nephilim is a mixture, a hybrid. That's exactly what that was. It's hidden in the scriptures, but I definitely believe Solomon. How could you be the wisest man that ever lived and not know about a chemistry and biology? You know, it's no way. It's impossible. And he mentions counting all the time. And when you use, you use math, the mathematics, and all those things, math, um, biology, astrology, you use math. And he was a master at counting and calculating um, pretty much. And, and Solomon's temple, you know, like the third temple is being like, so I don't even know if like the third temple is going to be how, I mean, I, 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 is it supposedly supposed, or is it supposed to be in Israel? But then if you ever listen to, uh, what was the guy's name? The, there's a pastor that has a thing that I was, I was uh, he has a video on that I was watching. Uh, oh, man, I forget his name. He's saying Israel's actually here in America because we're following God or something. We're following mm. the path that God wanted us to. But it was, and the third temple could be here or it could be in Israel. And I'm wondering if the Temple of Solomon could be like a DNA place where they want to merge with machines or, and, and piece it together or do the whole transhumanist thing. No question. Another thing that is, people may not know that Freemasons worship Solomon. He is um, a, ma a major in their secret society. They, they, they talk about the, the, the teachings of Solomon, the keys of Solomon. Yeah, he's, it, they re revere him as um, a Freemason, not just a Freemason, but someone that they look up to and his teachings. 
So um, Solomon, yeah, he was connected with some, I mean, pretty, pretty bad stuff after he was started off. He started off really good, of course, but then these women just turned him away. And uh, I would say, if you look at anything with Freemason, it's all connected to Solomon. You can connect it with the, mm -hmm. with the symbolism and everything, and even that that symbol on the on the Jerusalem flag. See, the temple is going to have to be built in that area to fulfill prophecy in the scripture. But it can be both. It can be there, and it can be here. I wouldn't be surprised. If it's both, I mean, the more temples that, can, that he can build, I'm sure he'll have them. I wouldn't be su be surprised at that at all. But yeah. um, go ahead. Yeah, and I'm, I really think, I mean, obviously, you know, Solomon's weakness was that, and like, and women, of course. Uh, I mean, I know it's two thousand wives or something, or yeah, what I, I forget. Two thousand concubines, not why. So two oh, concubines. Concubine. Yeah. So imagine how many concubines, how many in a concubine, and the multiply that by 2,000. So oh. he probably saw one wife one time, one year. He didn't see that same wife again to the next year. That's how many he had. He's 700 wives and I think 1,000 concubines, something like that. It was yeah. a great number. And I just want, like, you know, I, I, I often – I always try to, like, come up with, like, I, I know I think about it and I, I need to study more. Uh, I, I, but obviously the Bible has, it's true in every dimension and it, all of God's word is every dimension is true. And I think that I wonder if like how the split, what, what are your thoughts of, of, of this, of like the split of the old and new Testament was the seed battle from the fallen angels and, and the Nephilim blending in and just trying to ruin everything. Jesus coming and dying for, even if we have RH blood in us, he died and believing in him spiritually because I, I want, God was probably like, wow, uh, I got to save him somehow. Like, you know, the, 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 it spread everywhere. And he's like, here's Jesus believing him. The blood had to be shed, like the blood going into the earth even. And like, uh, there's, there's something physical that happened. I mean, besides, obviously, something physical happened. But with the blood coming into the earth and, like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like that was, like, the that Jesus dying for us, giving us salvation is because he's like, look, you're all born in sin because we're all born from that bloodline of actual interstellar hybrids coming in. And he's like, you're all born in sin. I got you guys covered. And covered in the blood you know literally exactly he had to the bible says that he became sin for us he didn't he, his life he committed no sin not even one we're not it's not recorded at all that any sin he committed but he became sin for us in other words he took on that dna that mm. um, tainted dna to become us when he was when he died on that cross see that cross is is shaped like an x chromosomes are shaped like an x so he literally got on took on those chromosomes so we can have our um our, our blood and our chromosomes regenerated that's exactly what he did so uh, we have to appreciate them him for that and um, another side note that i i wanted to mention a few seconds ago on israel's flag is a hexagram that's not the sign of israel they call it the seal of solomon or the star it was it called the star of david but the Bible never mentions anything about David having a star. That is the seal of Solomon. And it is connected, like you said, to demons. He had some kind of a strange relationship to these demons or these Nephilim. But when the Rothschilds helped to fund Israel becoming a nation in 1948, maybe, they um, paid to have, have that symbol on, you know, on, on Israel's flag. So that's really not a symbol of a God at all. That is a he your hexagram where you place hexes on people that's what it's supposed to be for witches use it wizards use it at, at all times but that is not supposed to be the symbol of israel that's the rothschilds that put that symbol on it because they funded it if you ask me the symbol should be the menorah that should be the, the symbol of you know israel for lack of a better one at the time but that upside down hexagram i mean the hexagram if you turn it upside down it looks like the uh, the baphomet has so many layers to that symbol. So there's no way that God wanted that to represent Israel. But the Rothschilds, who are Illuminati, Freemason, Zionists, you know, of course, they funded um, Israel to become a nation because before that time it hadn't. So hopefully 
um, in these days, there'll be some changing of that symbol on that flag somehow. I was just talking to a friend of mine um, about, she was talking about, she's uh, into the, 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 the rock and the Federation and the Course in Miracles and stuff, the mm. channeling and all that. And how they're they're there's like oh we got to get to five D go to five like the the higher dimensions and we'll be good. And I thought of this I was like well there's going to be lower dimensions too because like for every because uh, in 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 Enoch or was it in, I think it was Enoch of how the ten archons which are dimensions too they're they're the, the, the dimensions and and Bishop Larry was just saying how he was explaining how the ten dimensions work ten fingers ten t you know. And they had the pyramid, right? So, what is the is the David the uh, David's flag? Uh, uh, the the star of David is a pyramid up and down. Put it out, like put uh, all you gotta do is squeeze them together, and because it's a triangle up and a triangle down. And I'm and I'm like, well, that's that's bit, like they knew that back then. Like they're like, okay, this is going up, this is going down. Let's try to understand all of them and like manipulate reality. I think or whatever they're trying to do. But if there's 10 heaven, dimensions of heaven, there's going to be 10 of hell then too. And I just had this conversation uh, with my friend. And, and that's, I remember a lot of people were like, oh, you know, Israel, uh, they're, they don't like God or, or the Bible or however they, they want to put it because, oh, Israel, you, you know how evil they are for having a nation. Why would God want them to be killing all these people? And, and, and I tried reading it slowly, and I don't know. I mean, you, you probably know better than I do. Uh, God never said that, yeah, Israel, you're going to, like, he just said it would happen. He said you would be a nation. But he wasn't like, yes, you know, murder all these people. You're, you're, you know, he, they're still going to be sinners. They're still going to be doing things. And the way they, they were started even through the Rothschilds, like that's not a righteous way, but all that God said is, "Yeah, you will have your nation." Like uh, he, he didn't. He I, I don't know if God was like. Uh, I mean, yes, with him, the 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 saved the saved ones will be with him. Yes, but I'm talking about the nation in 1947 when it, when it became. Did did he ever say that it was that it was good and and you and uh, uh, all he said was it would happen? And in a way, I'm like God didn't like really say it was good, did he? He just said, this is going to happen, and it's the, like, this will happen in the future or whatever. Well, I mean, he, he always wanted Israel to be a nation. It's his nation, as, as a matter of fact, but throughout, the, throughout history, you see the infiltration of, of the Illuminati, but ultimately is, is Satan. And, of course, that's what he wants to do. And there's, there's even confusion about who the true Israelites, you know, are. Some people believe that, you know, it's the people that are um, Jewish by name, but some people believe it's the people that are Jewish by birth. And a lot of black people believe that um, the Hebrew Israelites were black, not um, Jewish as we think of them today. And that was, that's, that's why it was disturbing, of course. And the first slavery was Pharaoh, a black person, enslaving the Hebrew Israelites who were also black by history. I mean, it's not, I'm just not throwing this out there. This is a proven fact, but a lot of people don't want to accept it. Um, so that would make sense about how uh, a lot of black people have been getting treated throughout history. It would make right. a lot of sense if that was true. Like, why? Why would they be getting, you know, picked on the way they have throughout history, throughout, throughout time? But if that is true about them being Hebrew Israelite, then that would make perfect sense. But of course, Jesus, who is the great bridge maker, made it so anyone who wasn't a Hebrew Israelite can come to him and we can all be one family because we're engrafted in there. It's interesting to note that you talk about those triangles ups, uh, upside down and up. If you notice when a lot of people speak on TV or actors or something, they always do this. Do you ever notice that? Yes. They always do this when they talk or they, or they do this. That's not by accident. It's on purpose. It's, it's a signal. It's a, or they do something like this. It's a signal or a sign that they're sending out. It's a frequency that they're sending out and it, it connects with their Rothschilds and the Illuminati and Satan all together. So it's not an accident. When you, if you, cannot, when you speak and talk, you cannot accidentally just do this. You have to actually make yourself. I speak all the time, you know, and, and I never just do this by accident because I'm not trying to, but they're subconsciously right. trying to do that and send that sign and that frequency and that symbol. So that triangle, that hexagram has everything to do with that. Well, and it's almost like 
you're summoning something. Yes. Because even, yes. even when I pray, if I pray, I get like, I don't, I don't even know what my hands do. Do I do this? I usually, I might go like this. Most, I'm like, most people I'm like, do. Yeah, like, I'm, but like Professor, uh, Professor X, I'm like, yeah, yeah you know. I don't even know what my hands do when I'm when I'm uh, getting all weird and and just crying and repenting and you know uh, throwing my hands up in the air and gnawing at the. <laughs> most people, most people pray, they pray like this, but let's right. just be specific. The Bible never tells us to fold our hands when we pray. The Bible never tells us to close our eyes when we pray. You can do that. There's nothing right. wrong with it, but we're not told to specifically do that. There's times in the Bible where it says Jesus looking up. To heaven start so if you're looking up your eyes aren't closed you're looking up that's what he said looking up to heaven he prayed so he's not on his, he's not folding his hands his eyes aren't closed he's looking up and he's praying the bible says that several times so the wow. position to me would be you know yes you can keep you should keep your eyes open people might probably close their eyes because they want to concentrate maybe on what they're praying on, but we're not told when we're in a public setting we have to close our eyes we have to fold our hands when you say grace when you're a child it takes you Hold your hands and say grace. We're not told that in the Bible. We're not told that specifically. So people that are doing it because they think that's the way you're supposed to do it, that's not even, that's not true. You know how when uh, you're at church or, or someone's talking and, and giving a sermon or street preach or whatever, and they say someone in here needs to hear something, I need to hear that because I hope our viewers hear that because I don't know if any if anyone ever has been like this, but when I was started playing at churches a lot in Texas, every time they would pray, it was the first time I connected with the spirit. It was just my own thing. Like, I don't pay attention to anybody else every time. And I was like, I would pray. I'm like, God, I'm sorry. I'm looking up. But like, I'm like, I have to do this. And everyone, and everyone would go like this. And whenever I pray my head, it would always go up and, and my hands are out all the time. I don't know why, but I just like, I felt it so much more, and I, I just, I, I, the, the energy of it, and it, con it connected me better. And I was like, is this bad? Like, I would never want to go up to God and be like, hey, um, what about that time? You know what I mean? Like, I would never, but I feel like I want to, it's just natural to me. And I never heard anybody say that. God bless I, you. I, I think that people want to, they want to feel like they don't, they won't, they won't have any distractions with their eyes open. I guess that's what they feel like. So they can, they, they close their eyes. I guess that's why, but that's not the biblical posture. And even the bowing of the head part, there may be times when it talks about bowing our head, but not specifically to pray. If you want to be so specific, the prophets like Elijah and, and Elisha, when they pray, they got down on their knees and put their head down between their knees on the ground. You know how the Muslims do? That's a copy of what they did in the Bible. That's yes. the correct posture of you praying when you're on your knees with your head down, um, praising God. But when Jesus was in a public place, he looked up and prayed. Now, when he prayed alone, he may have done that posture like Elijah and Elisha, but in a public setting, you know, most churches, they have you, okay, bow your heads, close your eyes so we can pray. And I always, when I was little growing up, I was like, well, why do you have to close your eyes? Why can't you open them? Why can't you? And now that I understand and know, you can't open you. It's, it's biblical. You know, that's, yeah. it's very biblical. So I hope nobody's feeling like, okay, I have to close my eyes. I have to I have to squeeze my hands real tight or God won't hear my prayer. No, no. The way he hears your prayer is very simple. And I'm going to make it very simple to people. How you pray, get your prayers answered, and he hears your prayers. You pray to the Father, through the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. So what I say, you start your prayer off, Heavenly Father. And what you say in between, between you and him, as long as you stamp it with the end in Jesus name, you're good. That prayer is going to get heard. Period. Yes. Oh, dude, that uh, it's beautiful because I started out every time like that, Heavenly Father, and I was like, send your Holy Spirit. But like, so I know even if I'm praying with someone, I'm like, I always feel like I'm going to, you know, mess it up, but I'm like, or not mess it up, but I, I talk too much. Everyone knows this. I'm always told to shut up. I'm not trying to make it about myself. Some people say, I'm like, oh, stop. You're talking. And it's not my ego. I'm just, I don't know how to use words sometimes. And, uh, and I always pray for the Holy Spirit, and I do end it that way. Oh, thank you. And, 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 and thank you so much. And, and let me say one more thing, too. People that think that, okay, did I, did I pray right? Did I say the right thing? God, our Heavenly he's a loving Father and so patient. He deals with us like children, patient. Okay, you know, he'll show us how to do it, and he'll accept us. But 
He's not looking for, you didn't say this way or that way. No. Long as you started off addressing the Heavenly Father, because that's what Jesus tells him. He tells him how to pray. He said, you have to pray to the Father, and you end it in his name. He's not yeah. saying what you have to say in between. Now, of course, when you get more mature and you grow, you'll be able to learn the word and add the word in there to your prayers because the word is supposed to pray the word. But before you know that, you pray from your heart, sincere from your heart, and he will hear those prayers and ask them. He's not up there trying to reject prayers like a <laughs> like Kim and Matumbo, like boop, boop, knocking them down. No, 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 no. He's not rejecting prayers. He's accepting prayers. Right. Yeah, and, and, and Jesus also said, you know, don't go, go in public places and show people that, oh, I'm praying. Uh, uh, go to your closet, basically, and go in your room, close the door. And, and that's, that's when I, like, that's when I, like, I'm, and what's interesting, I always get on the floor and I literally curl up. When you said that, that happened to me when, uh, about seven years ago, when I really finally, when I, when I believe my life changed totally, I've always prayed to Jesus and everything, but it was a complete mindset to, to, to know how to use his, the word and to, and to mm. talk about it and to actually say, and I would, and I, that happened to me one night and it's very uh, emotional thing in my life. And it was just like, everything was going wrong. I thought God was screwing me. Uh, he was, I was just here to be his, you know, uh, just make, be like the worst example to everybody. So everyone, else. it was like the lowest point. And I remember I was like, I like went crazy and I just like got on the ground and then it just came right in. And I was like, oh my God, it, it's, it's all real. And it literally, yeah. I, it came to me as I'm alive right now. It's like, yeah. oh, it's all alive. And that's when I was, everything I knew was out, was out of here. Like all that bad stuff. It was just like, like somebody grabbed my head, tore it open. And there's just a bunch of just like hairy, you know, when you're pulling out, uh, just like a clogged drain and I was like throwing everything out. Wow. And my, my entire being was uh, completely changed. And I, you know, my, my whole life that's is powerful. Been, yeah. That's powerful. That's powerful, man. <laughs> that's oh, God. and uh, dude, I, I, I wanted to, uh, to mention that. Uh, did you know that, did you ever hear of Jekyll Island? Jekyll, no, In, I, I don't think I have. Jekyll Island. Who's right there, the where fractional reserve banking was, or fe the Federal Reserve was signed on okay so jekyll island and you can check this out jekyll who this is i mean you, you probably know because you, you know a lot about the rothschilds they signed the, the the federal reserve like the the, the idea behind it they uh -huh. signed it on an all on a it, it, i basically they built this building on top of an ancient canaanite altar in Jekyll Island, and that's where they signed the. They, that's what the, the basically the thirteen. I'm assuming heads of the thirteen families, maybe I don't know, got together and they signed the Federal Reserve in Jekyll Island. And this house, I, or it's this building, is built on top of the Canaanite altar that was worshiping Baal. That's why our mm. whole money system is worshipped in a way of God. It's because think about it. People, you, right now, and this sounds perfectly fine. What, watch this. Oh, dude, how are you going to live? You don't, you don't make money. That sounds normal, right? That sounds like, oh, you, he's a logical person. But no, you can't live without God. No. Like, they're trying to make you say, oh, you, you need money to live. No, like, that's, that doesn't even exist. Yeah, and in the Bible, he says you, cannot, um, you can't love both. You're going to love one and hate the other. And he, and he said, you're going to either love God or mammon. Now, I find it interesting. He, he goes against money. Like, there's a choice. Like, if you just said you can't live without money. But he says, you're going to either love money or you're going to love me. That's what he says. So if he's saying that, then he must be perfectly prepared to provide for you. Let's, let's be honest here. Money is just a tool. It's just a tool. If I want to get a new car, I have to have money. But... If there's a way I can get that car without money, as long as I get the car, that's all that matters. And I don't mean stealing it. I mean, right. God can cause favor to happen. You know, God can cause um, someone to bless you with the car. God can cause you to get a, a, an a enormously low price for the car. And the more, you know, but he can cause ways. Somebody can, you can inherit the car. There's so many ways God can get things to you without having to get you the money. So, 
he's obviously telling you, look, I'm the I'm the God of the universe. If you need money, come to me. Don't go to Mammon because you can't serve both of them. If you go to Mammon, then you're going he says, you're gonna love the one and hate the other. It's no in between. So if you love money, you hate God. Yes. That's what he said. It's no in between. And you know what? Literally was happening to me because I, I was of my situation. That's what I was so angry at God. Mm. And I was like, I, I, because I was like, I'm poor, like, you know, I, I had nothing. And I, I was like, what? I, and like, that's literally, that's so true. As soon as you start like, how am I going to, where's all the, you literally, you're all of a sudden your mind is closing and closing and closing and closing. And yeah, I, I, I love Doc, I, I, I love how you said um, favor or blessing. Yes. Yes. You didn't say luck because luck no. is of Lucifer. He literally yes. Made work. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And that's, and that's, of course, why we talk about portals because that eliminates luck. Nothing happens by accident. Someone ah. somewhere makes a decision and then it affects this realm. You know, that's, you talked about the altar or altar on the Jekyll Island. That's how portals work you have to have an altar an altar and whoever the altar is built to and receives the worship that's who can um influence the region and have authority in that region so for example if moses is building an altar to god to the, the lord god jehovah then he can vi visit that region and like he said in genesis 18 that he he says two three men which are angels came to visit him in his tent where did they come from they came through a portal that was opened by him building the altar. Well, let's reverse it around. What about witches? Witches, they're very sneaky. See, portals mostly, altars have to be in high places or on top of something, like just on top of something. Islands, mountains, high buildings, um, trees, anywhere it's a high place. But what witches will do, and Satanists, they'll go up in high mountains and trees and they'll put up um, male and female genitalia upside down crucifixes, upside down triangles, um, perverted stuff, and put a curse on it, say anybody who touches this, let everybody, let them be cursed. And things will happen in that city, in that region, because it was up there. See the difference? Whoever gets the praise and the, and, and the, and the worship through the altar, whatever deity gets it, that deity has um, authority to operate and do the things that they want to do in that land, whether it be either God, or whether it be either the devil, whether it be a holy angels, whether it be fallen angels. We have a choice of what we do. Wow. So you're telling me I can, like, that makes perfect sense. Well, uh, I could, Jesus was sent. I have authority, he said. Yes. And, and th that's why he had authority, because basically everywhere he went, he was the, the altar. I, you know what I mean? Like, he, that's why he, everywhere he went, he... I have I have the authority from God to you know uh, to do the miracles and everything. And well, see, people don't don't realize every time when the Bible says many times that he would get up early in the morning when it was still dark to go up up where up into a mountain. Why was he going up into a mountain? He was going to to um, close that portal from the other the second heaven and open it up so it could be free reign for God's power to come through the angels to come through. See, that's how portal, portals are like drains and clogs. I know we're getting ahead of ourselves, but it's like a, like a clog or a drain. Let me just explain this without even going into too much detail. Because I want to give you this definition real quick before I give you a, the, the, the detail. Portals are openings or points of entry for the supernatural. A portal is a door, a gate, a window, or even a person can be a portal. Portals open. How do, they, how do portals work? They open and they close. They open and they close. They open over regions, over cities, over nations, over geographical locations and territories of land. Portals also open up over people. So when there are places where people are slaughtered and killed and murdered, that place has been a portal opened up into the demonic realm until that stuff is, is, is renounced and taken care of by the blood of Jesus, it's open. You hear about hotels and places where they are haunted because the portals are open to that realm where the demons and devils can come through. Haunted, haunted houses and, and um, paranormal stuff, it's real. But someone opened the portal. Someone channeled someone through an altar or a sacrifice to be able to bring them through that realm. 
Oh, uh, I just thought of something. Your eyes also yes. and your yes. mouth opens and closes. You, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, and uh, oh my, I'm, just, I'm just getting so much right now. Uh, what do you think in, in horror movies? I, I, I've probably, I know I've said this before. I don't think with you though. They ne like every horror movie. They never. They're always like, okay, we're gonna have to find the the key with the where's the coffee cup, and you got to put like it's like this this uh, puzzle that you got to piece together and throw it at the spirits. When all you do is you get there in the name of Jesus, and you literally just cast the demon out, and they never say Jesus. They're always like finding the jade, you know, the jade monkey with the the crystal skull, and the okay, we need to think, and like, well, we got it, the, you know, and like it's always like a weapon, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And um, he created portals in Genesis one. When in the beginning, he created portals. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that. But um, it's pretty interesting how uh, those movies are pretty accurate when it concerns portals. You know, like movies like like the Avengers. They talk about portals in the Avengers. They come through portals in the Avengers. They yes. are accurate. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. The, uh, what? <laughs> then um, Star Trek. When they're going to get beamed up, they're going through a portal. See, that's even they even have video games called there's one called Portal, where you can go through different realms. You know, they call on our computer, they call them portals because they open up to different realms and different areas. And you know, so just keep that in mind. Anything that can close and open can be a portal. Doors, gates, windows, us, eyes, mouth, we can close and open our ears, anything like that can be. A portal. When uh, when you're saying cities, so like, I'm gonna say a city like Atlanta, ton of sin happening right there. Uh, I mean, any well, I mean, I'm not trying to sound terrible, but any city is just like basically demonically possessed. I mean, you know, hey, uh, I, I'm not here to judge people. It's the spirit. I always judge the spirit, not the person. But uh, so, do you think that I don't know about every city, but in a lot of them. In the mountains nearby, well, evil high, in high places, spiritual wickedness in high places. I wonder if if anyone knows if there's witchcraft going on in the mountain, in the trees, in that area, in that city. Like, I wonder if, like, every city you go to, you're, like, looking around. Uh, I'm going to try it. Oh, there it is. There's the upside-down penis chopped off with the vagina trying to turn it into, you know. Only the Holy Spirit can show you. Only the right. Holy Spirit. Because it, it's... It, it's uh, the, the word occult means secret. They're supposed to, they want to keep it secret. So there's, they, they, and they do it in such a way where it looks like it's in the tree, man, like in the branch. So you wouldn't be able to just notice it. You have to have the discernment of the Holy Spirit to be able to, uh, to know because they're not going to, they're not going to, you know, just let, let, let you know. And um, there are places like, you're right, you mentioned Atlanta, Chicago. Those portals are closed up to the third heaven, which we're going to talk about in just a second. There's no access. There's no way God's angels, and he even himself can come and go. It's closed up. Only those demons, and you, when, when a place is filled with violence and murder and a certain things happen to everybody, everyone, then a portal is, is open to a certain realm. When we talked about, we want to show, we talked about the witch. Remember the witch from um, Hollywood? Yep. Louisa Hubner. Hollywood sign is on a high mountain. That's a that's up that's a that's a portal. You know, yeah. that's a high place. And she opened opened that portal. And whenever I tell people about that story, even when I told you guys, nobody has ever heard it. Like, what? I never heard of that. I never heard of that. Only the Holy Spirit could have shown me that. There's through the dream. There's no other way. So by me, you know, addressing that certificate, that's a symbolic of tearing down the high place. So I, have, I can't go over to the Hollywood mountain and pull down those letters, but from where I'm at by burning that certificate, that was a way to, to, to do it. But in many places, when you see death, murder, somebody had commented um, on the video when we did about the, the witch, and they said that where they were at, everybody in that town, almost every husband and wife were getting divorced. They come there, they would be happy, being loved. After a year, it, it would change. They would be at each other's throat. The woman would be at home watching the, 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 the family, and the men would be out, going out to bars all night. And it happened to many, many, many people. Somebody told me that. That's a portal that's closed to the third heaven, but open to the second heaven. And when that happens, these second heaven beings are fallen angels. They're deceivers. I'm getting ahead of myself on that. 
But if that's the case, then until that portal is like a drain, we have to clean the drain out, and unclog it until it's unclogged. It's not. It's not going to be anything that can flow through there. Nothing can flow through there from the from the third heaven. You know, basically. And let me just jump to this so we can find out about this first, second, and third heaven. Oh, certain, yeah, act tell me. certain activities that we do can either close or open the heavens or the portals. Inside the word spiritual is the word ritual. Ritual. So there's certain rituals that you can do to open or close portals, either for God or for the devil, either for the holy angels or for the fallen angels. There's certain ah! things that you can, certain rituals you can do. Now, the word ritual is not a bad thing. It just simply means certain practices that you can do, like a ritual. I, I pray every day. Now, that, that's considered a ritual by definition. But it's not a ritual where I'm just, you know, chanting and all that. But they do those things as rituals. And whoever does it to the most, to the highest submitted form, they'll be able to open those portals. And another thing, too, is being together. When people, when the witch cast that spell, 11,000 people together. When you have more people together, you can create more of an energy that can open up um, a portal and can usher in or channel spirit or spirits to operate in that land so it's spiritual 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 that's it's, that's what it is basically wow oh, and, and it's all and it's also like dragon ball z when he's i need all your power when he's uh doing a spirit uh spirit bomb spirit bomb and he would be like friends leave me your energy and yeah. i remember watching that i'm like no you fools <laughs> <laughs> But, now, those uh, cartoons and movies, they, they know about portals. If you watch oh, them, they'll yeah. tell you. They'll tell you. And, uh, you know, it's I, I can't, just how you said about spiritual. There's a good way to do things and a bad way. And if people don't understand that, that, oh, you know, nothing's good, nothing's bad. We learn from everything. I'm like, no, it's literally... You can, uh, if you want some place to be good, you have to do these things. If you want some place to be bad, yeah, I mean, you're free to do whatever you want. I get it. But, I mean, you can't say what's good or bad. No, there's consequences for everything. Yeah. Um, and, and open gates and doors allow traffic between the physical and spiritual realm. It's like a highway. It's a highway for um, beings, um, heavenly beings to come and go. That's what, like, we're on a freeway on a highway, that's for us to come and go. That's what the portals are for. That's, what, that's how they work. And just simply so we can understand how he created them in the beginning. Okay. It says that God made the firmament and divided the waters which were above the firmament. This is Genesis 1, verse 7. From the waters that were um, above the firmament, from the waters that were below. So God, there's a, there's a heaven there, right? And in that world that there was, in that time before he had to destroy it, everything was one, like a water world. Hard to explain, hard to understand, but all the water was in one place. So he separated that water. He put some of that water above and some of that water below. And under the sky's throne, then there's a water or a sea of glass, then there's the outer space, then there's the skies, then there's the sea or the land. So um, what he did was, after the fallen angels who tried to invade heaven, he didn't want that anymore. He didn't want them coming up trying to invade heaven anymore. So he put that sea of glass. So no more free coming and going. There's a sea of glass and there's a, there's a top, there's a hole, there's an opening there. And he put spears of light, there's spears of light, like, a, like if you could think about a tube of light that right. starts in the third heaven and goes down through outer space, down through the sky, down to earth, down to hell. So the portal goes from heaven down to hell. And there are openings in the third heaven. There's an opening in the second heaven. There's an opening on, on the ground for hell. There's three openings. And depending on what we talked about earlier, which are they going to open? Which are they going to close? But what happened was when those fallen angels fell, where did they fall to? They didn't fall to the earth. They didn't fall to the sky. They fell to that second heaven. And people say sometimes, well, how do you know there's a second heaven? Because the Bible says it's a third heaven. 
you'd be truly foolish trying to um, ha build a house with three stories and skip a second story. So if there's a third heaven, there has to be a second heaven. But what happens is these fallen angels get inside of there and by people committing sin or murder or, or cannibalism or whatever they're doing to, to um, pervert that portal, it closes it up. That, that top of the second heaven will not open. It only opens to the second heaven. So they're not getting anything. No prayers are going up to God. They're not getting any prayers coming down and being answered. They're not getting any miracle. They're not, they're only getting from the second heaven because it's clogged up because of what they what they've done. And in the second heaven, they just go down, they give the dreams, the nightmares, they give preachers false revelations. Some of them who are not having being open to that third heaven. They parade around as um real angels. But they're the fallen ones because that portal is closed. Now, when we're able to praise and worship God, repent for what happened, close that, por that portal to the third heaven, take communion, whatever we have to do, then it's cleaned out and cleared out. Then that's when things start happening from God. Prayers start getting answered. You start getting favor. Angels start coming down and bringing the answers of God to pray. You start having no more nightmares. Things start happening. It's like a sunshine over your life because that portal is open to the third heaven. No more darkness and cloudy day, so to uh, speak. Th that was beautiful because I'm sure that we have a lot of uh, a lot of people out there know what it's like to wake up to darkness. You wake yes. up and it's and it's just like it, you used to wake up and everything was uh, like the world. You would wake up and your mind was just like, oh, I could do all this. Then you start getting old, like things start changing in your life. No, I can't do that anymore. Can't do that. Can't do that. And like all of a sudden, your mind is like, I, I can't do anything. That's the, the devil and that's that blockage. And as soon as it's open, you're like, I could be any, and you're, it's truly freeing. And I, I, I pray that our listeners can, can understand uh, the love of Jesus Christ in their heart because it literally yes. opens up your entire mind. And, uh, and everything in, in your entire being. Um, and I'm, you, I was you know, say about you, you know those movies where you see people going when they're going from to a, from a different time to a different dimension. How they go through the portals, they go, they're going, they're going down, and they're going to like a different. Thor. Like Thor. Yes, that that's exactly what the portals are. Outside of of those portals is where God exists. That's eternity. There's no time there. Through those portals is a faith realm, and down uh, when you get to the get to Earth or or the sea. That's what time is. Those portals, they're, they're like a time warp, like Thor. Perfect example. You're going through time, right? You're going through the eternity right down into time. There's no time between those portals. That's why those angels and those fallen angels are able to exist in there. That's an eternal realm. But everything that we need, everything that we need, not just um, materially, but everything we might need from God, emotionally, encouragement, everything is up there. It's up there. And he has angels who are assigned to bring stuff from up there down to us when we ask him or pray for it, to God for it, but they can't get through because of that second heaven. A real good example is Daniel chapter 10. When Daniel was praying, he fasted for 21 days. And the angel came and said, hey, yeah. I've been trying to get through here for 21 days. But when I came, I had to fight this ain't Prince of Persia. I had to fight him. Then when I got here, I had to fight this angel. But what happened was the, the, the angel that came to Daniel and the angel of the Prince of Persia, the angel, the, the fallen angel of the Prince of Persia was mightier than the angel that came to Daniel. It's a ranking system in the, yes. in, in the angels. So that he Michael? had to call, yes, he had to call for Michael. Michael outranks that Prince of Persia fallen angel. So Michael came and defeated him. But you get a glimpse on what's happening in that second in that world, when they, Gabriel come, was, come, was coming down to Gabriel, to, uh, to Daniel, through the portal. But who did he encounter in that portal? A fallen angel coming, try, uh, trying to come through. Come through because it's, it was clogged up. Had Daniel not fasted and prayed those 21, if he had stopped on day 19, day 16, day 14, Gabriel would not have been able to come through that portal. Wow. And, and the messenger. That, oh, that, well, that's probably why Gabriel couldn't fight him, because Gabriel's the messenger. He always has the me – like, you know, messengers can't fight. Like, you know, some people say I'm a messenger because I talk a lot. I, I'm, I can't, I'm weak. My wrists are skinny. Uh, Casey, you would be like Michael, you know. I'd be like, crap, Casey, you know. 
Oh, wow. Wow. No, and you know what? Uh, I The third heaven, I believe, is outside of our entire system because Jesus said that Satan is the – he runs. He's the creature, the creation. You know what I mean? He runs this, this like, realm that we're in. The God he's of like, this world. Yes, he's the God of this world. Like, that's why he's in, maybe it's the second dimension, but he runs all this and can, like, manipulate it in all the ways that he wants. But he can't be everywhere at once, though, either, so. No, no, but not at all. that's why, I like, it's like this realm can, can be manipulated, but we still have, I mean, we don't need <coughs> priests to get there. We have the direct <coughs> to, yes. to God. Man, that's, that is so... You just opened my. I hope you opened up other people's minds too, because like, uh, the biggest battle in your own life, not to sound like not to just make it about yourself, but like you know, everyone wakes up and like you can be so depressed, and uh, you don't even know why you're depressed. You're like, I have nothing. You know, like it's it's blockages, and it's and you just want to clear that out and get it out and just and 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 clean it up. And oh, but I'm just thinking about Hollywood. Go ahead, go ahead, get, get back to it. No, I was going to say before we get to, um, when you talked about earlier, we talked about looking up. In, in Psalms chapter 24, it says that the king of, for the king of glory to come in, the doors have to lift up their head. Who are the doors? Doors portals. He's talking about us. We are portals. But he's talking about you have to lift up your head. Like you have to open up the, the top of the portal. You have to open it up for the king of glory can come in. That's what it says. So looking up is very important. It's like a open. You look up, you open. Your head, you lift your head up, and that's when the, the, the glory of God can come in. And it also says in Psalm 24, anyone that's taken an oath cannot be a candidate for the glory to come in. But that's a whole different subject for a whole – that's these Freemasons and these Illuminati people can't get the glory of God until they have been um, cleansed and renounced. But as long as they took an oath, fraternities, sororities, I don't care what it is. You take an oath, you swear, the Bible says um, you're not a candidate for that glory. Not, you, can't, you can't love God. You can't love Jesus. But but this glory, that glory, is just light, that bright light, which is powerful. You can't have that until you um, renounce what you have, whatever oath or whatever you swore to. What did Jesus say? Uh, why? Uh, how could you swear on your head uh, uh, if you can't even change the color? I'm going like I get gray hairs. You can't change your gray hair. Why would you swear on your on your life then if you can't even change? Uh, what? Um, I mean, yes, we can dye our hair, but we, it's still going to be gray. Yes, yes. So I thought that was interesting. And for another thing that maybe this may encourage people, but it talks about portals in Genesis chapter one, verses fourteen and fifteen. And when it's talking about portals, because the Bible mentions doors, gates, and windows, and when you look up the word doors, like in, in Revelation, when it says a door opened in heaven, that word door literally means portal, literally. So when John said, "I saw a door open in heaven," oh. He saw the um, portal open to that third heaven, and see what happens when there's no interference, when there's no traffic from those um from those fallen angels. God, the, the angel was able to come right down to John. He was he was not only this how it is. Not only are they able to come down, but we're able to go up. That's why Jacob saw a ladder. A ladder's not just for going down. You can go up a ladder too. It's a two way traffic, so it's mm -hmm. open. That's many people have been to heaven have because. When it's clean, you can't go. We, we can go up, and he can go down. When people die, that's how they get, their spirits get to heaven, through the portal. When they're not saved, how do they get to hell? Through the portal that goes down into hell. Remember the Bible says the gates of hell. Gates are portals. They open and close. Gates of hell to not prevail against it. So the gates of hell, gates can open and close. There's gates of heaven, too, that can open and close. That's how it works. But in Genesis 1.14, but when God had to look at these words, it makes perfect sense of why he put these portals there. And God said, let there be lights. When I looked that up, it literally means brightness or favorable circumstances. Catch that. Favorable circumstances. So when these portals are cleansed, you can find yourself in favorable circumstances. In the firmament of heaven, and he made them to divide the day from night to let them be for signs, which means miracles, and for seasons, which means appointed times, po appointed times when you're supposed to receive miracles, you're supposed to receive things, and for days, and for years. And the word years means to alter time. 
So in other words, if something you've been praying for for a long time or you, or you need it, doesn't mean you have to wait five, six years to get it. God can get it to you the next day, despite what you may have been scheduled for. But the devil wants to block it and delay it and keep you from seeing it, keep you from looking up and keep that portal from being open. And the last thing it says, and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven and to give light upon the earth, and it was so. So these portals are lights, lights that are supposed to bring favor um, and favorable circumstances to the people who are under them. But the opposite is the fallen angels want to bring the opposite of favorable circumstances. They want to bring misery to us. And if the portals aren't opened and cleansed, they will succeed at that. And God can do nothing about it until we do something about closing and opening the portals. To the second heaven what so years is a controlling of time is that yes. what you said it says you can alter years it says alter, alter alter time alter time so you know how it's like a revolution from one year to the next but you hear all the time people say wow this year went by fast or this year went by slow god is not in time he's outside of time he created time on the fourth day when he made the the, the, the lights and the, and the sun and the, and the stars, that's when time started for said, days, nights, years. Before that, there was no time. But he is always outside of time. He is, was, and he will be. He is not time. He is outside. So he can, anytime he wants to, he can manipulate time. Or he can come in to step into time or step out of time. He can step into the time when the Garden of Eden was. He can step into the time when, um, when Martin Luther King was on earth, he could step into the time in 20, 2035. He can step in and step out because he comes through those portals too, just like his angels do, if they're clean. Right. I, and I, also, I often think about like, you know, when you're, when you're truly uh, clean of everything and you're, and you're with God, literally just your mindset is, 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 just, is just right on track with, with him and you're, you're fasting, whatever you're doing. Does, doesn't time take longer then? It's almost like you're not really like in time then because you're preying on it. You know what I mean? You're slowing it all down. Everything like, but like when you're just like, yeah, I got to make money or I, I'm, and you're living in the system that Satan created, all of a yes. sudden you're aging and like you're getting older. Oh, you know, and like time's going fast. Oh, what happened? It's the, it's, it's Monday already. You know, when yes, like great point. Monday comes, you should be like, oh, that's right. You know, today's the day I got to go out and, you know, do a podcast or like, or something, you know, if you have a job, you know, look at Casey. So I, I see him smiling, you know, he has just, you know, just a man that has a stable job, which is good. You know, that's great. Yes, of course. That's a great observation. Yeah. Do, do you, do you know that when the Lord rained down manna from heaven and um, rained down quail for them to eat, that the Bible says he did it through a portal. He didn't just fall down out of the sky. He came through a portal. It says in um, Genesis, in Revelation, let me see, in, in uh, Psalm 78, verses 23 to 25, 27, 20, it says, and he opened the doors of heaven, doors, portals, and he rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels' food. So what did he send it down to? A portal. He opened the door, a portal, a portal and sent it down. It, was, it didn't just, he didn't just throw it up in his, Throw it up and let it just fall down. It came through a portal. It came through a door. Uh, didn't the flood? Didn't something open in the in uh the flood in the sky? Uh, was it a yes? The windows of heaven. Windows. Yes. Yeah. And remember, I just said windows, doors, gates. You see those right. in the scripture? Those are portals. So what did he do? Remember, I told you the water. The waters were separated from above and below. He opened the portal in heaven and let them waters that was up there flow right down, right through the portal through portal and there are portals all over earth all over there there are, there are portals from the from the, he, the third heaven through the second heaven all the way to earth all over the place california um L lebanon jerusalem iran china whenever there's conflict and battle there's battle over those portals when you see a lot of stuff going battle over america usa battling over those portals and these are spiritual spiritual beings you can't see that are fighting over um, these portals because someone on the ground is either doing something to usher them in or block them from coming in. One the, of the, pro the, the protests. Excellent I mean, point. Wherever Excellent they point. are, 
literally wherever, like, and, and it's almost, I mean, not everyone, but uh, <laughs> a lot of them, you know, uh, there, something is always, they're harnessing something. They think they're doing good. They think yes. they're good. They're, like they're, they, they're using logic. God said, we're not, don't rely on your understanding or anything. Just rely on the word of God. And they don't yes. understand how to even uh, interpret that and i'm not saying that they're bad people uh, uh, but they're they're being led by false things and uh you know it's it's false light duh duh this is i'm That's sorry uh, doctor it. this just That's happened it. to me that ill ill lumina illuminate ill is means takes away it's fall it's it's pulling down lower lessening go downtown isn't it cool go down yeah uh it's always dimensional and uh it's even you know anyway ill takes away if you want to light something up you would illuminate that mm. but we say like we th we think it's normal you know illuminate the room was illuminated right that that would mean it's a f the room was filled with false light then but we think that means light Illuminati is false. Like it, it, it looks like light. It's like those LED things that uh, those LED lights are so weak you can't even see what shirt color you wear. You know what I mean? Like right, it's right. Like real light. So, and, so that means that the purpose of portals in it is to bring in the real light. But if it's not clean, it's going to bring in that dark black light, which is the Illuminati. Which was that's an excellent point you made about that ill. And that's, it's perfect. That's exactly right. what it is. Exactly. Right. I, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's also, it's also real. And when you think about like the, how every, basically every place you go, you know what? That's like really making me like think about my travels, you know, and everyone out there, I hope everyone thinks about this. Wherever you go, what spirit are they pulling in based on what they're doing? You know? Exactly. exactly. That's why we, whenever you travel or go somewhere, you got to be careful of the hotel rooms. You got you to do some praying before you go. I, I don't ever go into a hotel room and just say, okay, I pray over that room or whoever was in there before, or whatever has been going on, because that stuff can, can, can affect you. I mean, it's real. It really yeah. is. People don't understand that, but it really is. And um, when I told you about the angels came to um, – they came to Lot. It says that Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. That's Genesis 19.1. A gate is a portal. You see, so it's, it's, it's all through the scripture where these supernatural beings come through portals. They come through them. But there's, like I said, there's a deity on the top and there's a, a supervisor on the bottom, a man or person on the bottom, and one can't work without the other. The one on the top can't come down here unless that one on the bottom makes a way for them to come down here. So it works together. They, they can't do it. They can, all they can do is stand on top of that portal. They can't just come on their own. They can't just fly. They have to be ushered in or invite, channeled the ones that are, that are falling. They can be channeled. But we can praise God, and he'll send his angels. Remember the Bible says, he said that I can pray to the Father right now. He can send me a legion, over 6,000 angels, and they would fight for me. Where would they come? They'd come through that portal. And they fight. But like I said, there's portals all over the world. If you will be able to open, God will open your eyes, and you will see, you will see, poles, like poles, light poles all over the place. Some will be light, some will be dark and clogged up, but they're all over the earth because he wants his, his angels and he wants to be able to visit his people anytime he wants to. And how, what, what could be like, how, I guess just exactly what comes to my mind first, if I want to open up an altar for God, literally it can be anywhere as long as you're doing exactly what you're what he's calling you to do and what you know you're praying you're clear you have you know you you, you know what he wants i mean what what do you say like how, how do you think like not to cleanse a bit well kind of to, to cleanse a bad area you know is that just deep prayer and and uh by your walks like you know doing and well, a lot of times, too, I learned this, that, you know, when you're on some soil, you don't know what happened 100 years ago on that soil. You don't know what happened 300 years ago on that, wherever you're at. And um, what I've learned, and this is how the strategy that he gave me with addressing the spell in Hollywood, 
I had to repent for the sins that were done. I wasn't born until 1971. This spell took place in 1968. So I had to literally, literally, literally repent for the things that were going on at that um, spell cast, for the pedophilia, the sexual, all the stuff that I wasn't involved in. But I had to, re that's, it has to be a repentance made from it. And as I began to repent, I can really, I can begin to feel the heart of the Lord, his, his grief over the stuff that they were doing. I, I began, so I began to cry and just, you know, give him sincere repentance. That's what Daniel did in Daniel chapter 10. He repented for the sins of Israel. He wasn't even there. He repented for them. And that's when that angel Gabriel came through during that fast. So repentance, being sorry for what happened on that land and asking God to correct it, even though you didn't do it, is very important. That's what I'm talking about those haunted houses where people have been murdered and stuff and things are, there has to be a repentance and it has to be something, um, uh, the blood of Jesus has to be offered on that land, taken on that land. You know, not, not, not like, an exorcist, but the blood of Jesus is really what it has to happen. It's almost like repenting for stuff maybe that you that you could have been a part of that you don't even know. Like I could have, I could have helped. I'm not been been in my right mind and would have helped someone. And which I, I thought of this recently. Who talking to pedophiles? You have the people that are just. Again, I try. I, I try not to hate. Pe I, I don't try to hate people, but like it's that are just bent on these on this horrible, sinful abomination of of pedophiles. But I, I was thinking, I like, well, who's worse? Like. I mean, I know all sin is evil, but like you have the pedophiles that are doing all these things, looking for children, but then you have the people that are working for them that are like, oh, I'll find your, I'll find your kids. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's like this circle of like, I'll find them, you buy them. And it, it, it's like a, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, well, okay, this guy is under a spirit that he's possessed by that is making him want children and, and all these terrible things which they're trying to legalize by the way it's going to be lgbtqp i in in uh, a, a while I, I guarantee but or the people that are like oh i gotta get him his babies and like they're because god says running towards sin you mm -hmm. know what I mean? like they're running to find people and i know mm -hmm. that you know it's, it's all uh sin is is equal and all that but i mean still like they're running to sin and like if I ever, oh, I, I hate thinking about it even, but. No, nah, they're, they, they're going to hell too. The ones that get the kids for them and the ones that yeah. do stuff, they're all going to go to hell. They don't, I mean, they don't repent. But they, even, if, even if you repent of something like that, just because you repent, you may have, you know, bought your ticket to heaven, but it doesn't alleviate you from the consequences. People have to understand. People can think, okay, I ask God to forgive me of my sin, but there's, okay, he forgave you. But that does not mean that there was a, there's no consequences. You can't murder somebody and say, "Okay, God forgave me. Now don't take me to jail." No, there's still consequences for those right. things. And a key way these portals operate is through sacrifice. George Floyd killed right there in Minnesota, right there. That's opened up the portal to the second heaven. But what do Christians do? We don't go killing people. The Bible says we're supposed to be a living sacrifice. It's a living sacrifice versus a dead sacrifice. That's what it's always been about the whole time. Uh, uh, killing your sin, uh, your the uh, if you're an your alcoholic or, or, yes. or uh, if yes. you're a drug addict, yeah. And and I Kill, tell you, killing that, that, and then yes, and and that living sacrifice is always more powerful than that death sacrifice. But the problem is, not many people are willing to have that living sacrifice and give up those things that they enjoy or they enjoy doing. It, it's because we all want that moment just to go down and hang out. You know what I mean? Everyone works out all day. Like, you know, I'll work out, you know, and, and do, get all your stuff done. Oh, man, I just can't wait to go home and kill myself. You know what I mean? Like, let's go, boys. And you're just like, out going like, yeah, yeah. 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 But the, dev the devil wow. will commit a, he'll commit a murder and get that sacrifice done real quick and open that portal up real quick with no, with no problem. No problem. Uh, Doc, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I love every time you always open my eyes. I hope I, I offer something here. I mean, I'm not as, as taught as, as you and, Bla and Bishop Larry are, and like, I, I love it so much. I learned a lot. I hope it's coming your way, too, a little bit. <laughs> anyway. 
No, you did great. You taught me a couple of things today that I hadn't thought about. I didn't know about the Jekyll Island. There's a couple of things you said. So, no, you just a great, great show. Oh. You did an excellent job. Excellent. Look that, uh, yeah, check that out. Jekyll Island, Federal Reserve, Canaanite Altar, something like that. Um, I, I remember hearing it or reading it. it I mean, it was a few years ago. Uh, it's, it's all just like garbled in here now. But uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank the Lord that you're, you're here. And uh, God bless you as, as every time. Uh, any, any last words? Uh, any uh, a blessing? Uh, something that you, that you want to share uh, to wrap things up with before we uh, close off here? Sure. Um, um, people, anybody who's out there, who, we talked about portals today. Just um, recognize. See if there's a pattern. You can recognize what, how, where the portals are open to by a pattern. Is there a pattern of blessing going on? Is there a pattern of um, not just sin, but evil going on? Is there a pattern? I mean, look at that. You can recognize it. doesn't mean you have to run from it. But I hope that everybody took from that, that the spiritual world is, spiritual world is real. Angels are real. God is real. And the devils are real. That, all that stuff is real. Haunted houses are real. But the glory of God and angels coming to a house is real just as well. And the thing I want people to take away from this is you don't have to feel uh, bad or a certain way about praying. That's, I think that's what God wants us to focus on. I think people can be set free from that. All you got to do is say, Heavenly Father, ask him what you want, tell him what you need, and then end it in the name of Jesus. There's no other way. You don't have to fold your hands. You don't have to close your eyes. If you don't want to, that's not going to make him answer it anymore. If you squeeze him real tight, close your eyes real tight. He's looking at your heart. The Lord looks at the heart. That's what he looks at. He listens to your words, but sometimes people can say words and their heart can be thinking can be doing another thing. So he's looking at your heart and he loves us. He loves people. So he's not trying to um, not answer prayers. He's trying to answer prayer. And the last thing is, if you're not getting the prayer answered, then it's possible that that portal above you is closed to the third heaven. So you need to find out what you can do to get that portal open so your prayers can get to him and the answer can come down. Oh, doctor, thank you so much. Dr. Eddie and Graves, everybody. Um, guys, this has uh, been amazing. Uh, to all our viewers and listeners out there, we love you guys. But more importantly, Jesus loves you so much more that we can't even understand it because our puny brains are so small right now. But hopefully not. He really loves Casey, though. Jesus really loves <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Casey. <laughs> doctor, tell everyone, where, tell everyone where they can find you. Yes, if you want to um, follow me on Twitter, I'm at Etienne Memo, E-T-I-E-N-N-E-M-E-M-O. I'm also on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash Etienne Graves. If you go to Twitter, um, I have uh, my YouTube page on there. If you want to get any of my books, you can go to amazon.com forward slash author forward slash Etienne Graves. And lastly, if you want to donate um, to the ministry, you can do so at paypal.me forward slash capital E lowercase g-m-e-m-o, and that's paypal.me forward slash e-g memo. I thank you guys, and I appreciate you. I hope this has been an um, enlightening show for all of us. It was for me, I should say. Thank you, doctor. And I, I, got, I ordered all of your books on Amazon. I'm going to dive into them uh, very soon. Thank you, Casey. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. I hope you enjoy them. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you, man. Okay. You guys have a great evening, okay? You too, sir. All thank right. you. God All bless. Right. See you later, Jim. Bye, Jim. Yeah. Bye.